Welcome to the Reality Hunt Club. Now in this episode we're going to talk about how we get rid of predators. Now there's two primary ways we get rid of predators. The first way is by trapping. I'm going to go over the two types of traps we use later in this episode in more detail. But what we trap, we normally trap the raccoons. And there's three reasons why we trap the raccoons. The first one and, and the biggest reason is because if a raccoon finds a turkey hen's nest, he, um, the raccoon will destroy it. He'll eat every egg. So if you've got a lot of raccoons on your, um, on your property, then the chances of them finding your nest are pretty high. And the raccoons could devastate your turkey um, flock, your, um, your little ones growing up that year. And another one is, is if you have a, a, wet, um, a wet period between the time when the turkey hens start laying their eggs until they, they sit on them and they hatch, and if it rains a lot, then if you've ever smelt a wet turkey, then you know what I'm talking about. So the raccoons can smell those turkeys and find their nest when they're nesting on it. Even when the turkey hen gets up and goes off, it lays a, their scent lays around the nest and um, the raccoons can find the eggs and destroy them all. And we like hunting turkeys, so we're going to try to get as many, rid of many raccoons as we can. Now that whole theory has been, not, has been named the wet turkey hen theory. And anyway, the second reason is because the raccoons, they eat all our corn. They eat, don't eat all the corn, but they eat a lot of corn out of our feed stations. And a lot of these photos, you'll see the raccoons just sitting up there spinning the um, spinner plates, getting them. Um, corn out of the feed out of the feeders now also while they're at these feeders the raccoons will try to run off a turkey or they'll try to run off a deer so they can dominate and eat all the corn and we don't spend all this money to feed raccoons we spend all this money to feed deer and turkeys and the third reason is a raccoon if he gets mad at a feeder he'll he'll destroy it he'll tear the spinner plate up some sometimes they've even been known to pull the motors off the feeders and this just makes me mad and I spent, we spend lots of money on these feeders for these raccoons to tear up. So I do most of the trapping and when we catch them I take a lot of satisfaction out of um, removing them and um, as you can see how we trap them, um, we, you know, we're getting better and we're removing a lot of, turkey, a lot of raccoons from our, um, from our property. Also these traps can catch um, foxes but have never and bobcats but we've never really caught them. We primarily focus on catching the raccoons. The second way we kill predators is by sitting in tower stands like we're doing tonight. And Georgia doesn't let you use electronic calls on bobcats and foxes. So we're sitting here in this tower stand tonight. We're going to use some manual calls to try to call in some coyotes and some bobcats and some foxes. The club right now has got a lot of, of, um, a lot of gray foxes on the club. I'll show you some photos from our trail cameras and also some video right now. And even though, even though foxes, you know, foxes hunt mice and small game birds and stuff, but they also can hunt turkeys. And so we'd like to get rid of some more foxes. We just seem to be overrun with the gray foxes. So. Bobcats are not as bad. Coyotes, we have a few. Of course, you want to get rid of your coyotes because of the fawning um, retention time. The coyotes will find your fawns. But we haven't seen, we've seen a sp uh, ones and two coyote. We haven't seen a big pack on our property. So anyway, stay tuned. We're going we're gonna to sit right here and try to get a bobcat, fox, or coyote maybe on camera. But if not, we've still got a few more weeks to go in this season, at least the bobcat, foxes, and raccoons season, it ends of February 28. Of course, we can hunt coyotes year round. We've got a few club members that like to hunt these predators, so stay tuned at the end of this episode, and I'll put a tally as to how many of the different predators um, we killed. And so now I'm going to talk about the um, different types of traps and show you guys what we use. We use these little critter getters. I'll provide a link on our um, website for this. And um, basically, you set the trap and they reach their hand in here and they pull it out. And as they pull it out, there's a lever that switches, that switches the, that's, that's, there's a lever in there that activates it and it just grabs their arm in there. They'll be in there when you get here. And that's what we use. 
the way we bait them, the way I bait them, is I take the lever, which is inside, and I hold it up, and I put the marsh a marshmallow on the other side of it, okay? And then I put the lever down. So the coon has to put his hand down in there behind the lever to try to pull that marshmallow out. As he pulls that marshmallow out, that lever is going to go off and it's going to grab his arm, his hand. I've caught him one-handed and I've caught him with both hands. Got this um, trap setter. You put it here on the lip and then you put it on this edge right here. And then you hold it down and it's got some tension and some load in that spring and you set the set the set trap right there. Okay, it's set. All right, I like to use these straps, ratchet straps, it's just easier. Some people drive, some people drive poles in the ground. We've done that. I think I might be going to a chain. I'm always experimenting on the easiest way to um, get these um, get these traps set. So I'm gonna take this. It's got a chain on the end. I'm gonna thread it through like that. Okay, I'm going to take my ratchet. I'm going to thread through my ratchet strap. Okay. I got my trap right there. I'm going to run my ratchet strap all the way around this tree. Okay. Then I'm gonna ratchet it right there. Alright. That's why I'm thinking about going to a chain. I think a chain with a lever would be a whole lot easier than this method. Like I said, it always can change. So now I got it right there. So let me ratchet it closed. All right, he's not going nowhere. All right, now I put my put my trap right here in the ground. Push it in. Then I take some dog food and I fill up the cylinder between. And then I put a marshmallow on top just to keep the birds out. And then I put some around it to attract him. So hopefully he'll come by, put his little hand in there, and we'll catch him. So stay tuned. Let's see if we can catch him on this um. Little little critter getter. Boy, that's a mouthful. Anyway, they're about twenty to thirty dollars. These little critter getters. I like them the most. I catch them every time with these. So stay tuned. Oh, you bad, aren't you? Looks like your hand's caught, buddy. You won't be in my turkey's nest, nor will you beat my feed. No. I guarantee you, you're not going to get in my turkey's nest this year, are you, buddy? Huh? Think he'd come after us if we got Yeah. He seemed kind of passive. You can't go up the tree, buddy. Something's wrong with your foot. We also like we also like to use these box traps. Basically, they're when I say box, they're wire, and they have a mechanism in there, a little trap door, trap plank, whatever you want to call it. You, um, what you do is you, you push this down and you raise the door, the spring door open. And then you bring the lever, the, the little trap door, plank, whatever you want to call it, up to set it. Okay. So now it's set. It has a lever here. You can wire all the way down to the plank. So when the coon goes in there, or the fox, 
or whatever. He goes in there to, to eat the um, dog food. He'll set this door off. And when he sets this door off, the spring will release and, the, and that trap door will come down. I like to put a couple marshmallows in there. Put a couple out here to entice them. Put a little food out here so you can smell it. I use this um, Old Roy. I use this Old Roy from Walmart. Cheapest stuff to get. It smells really bad. And uh, that's what you want. You want the coon to be able to smell it. So when he walks in there, he gets he walks in there, he sets off that door when he gets to the end and the trap door goes down. So that's the two traps we like to use. Now for an update. Now, earlier in the episode, I talked about using chains for the Little Critter Getter traps. Well, I tried it. And let me tell you something. I learned something. And this is Reality Hunt Club now. This is definitely Reality TV because I'm fixing to tell you how I screwed up. Now, <laughs> I used the chain and I used the D-Link couplers to chain to attach the chain around the tree. And also use these D-Cup, these D-Link couplers to attach to the trap. That's hard to say, but anyway, it's these um, couplers. You you screw them. You screw them tight, and so I put these. I put the two traps out with this configuration, and I caught two coons. Well, when I got to the um, trapping area, I walked up on there, and I noticed one of the traps was gone, and I could see the the coupler link was on the ground, and, and apparently the coon had unscrewed it, and made off with the trap now he's running around with a trap looks like a handcuff around his when around his hand now i hate it i lost the trap and i also hate it that the coon's gonna be miserable but he eventually something will catch him and he will die so i'll just have to keep looking for that trap so anyway um so i learned that so as i was doing that i looked over and saw the other one well he was still there he wasn't smart enough to do the the couple link but i didn't tighten the um the chain around the tree very tight so when he saw me he started going up the tree with the chain and the trap so immediately i ran over there and started trying to shoot up in the tree so he didn't get too high and luckily i got him with my pistol and he fell back down to the ground so i didn't have to go up the tree to get my trap so this is reality the two dumb dumb things so but i did like the chains so what i what i figured i was going to do with the chains was i was going to buy some of those small key locks and tighten them around the chain around the tree that way and also tighten them around the trap and that should work for that configuration and i should be able to easily deploy those traps now that i've got to buy uh, at least one more new one to replace the one i lost so anyway um this is reality this is the reality hunt club now i have one more update since we videoed all this episode ahead of time um since then uh one of our members bought nine um, spring-loaded traps like the one shown here and I was very skeptic of him putting them out because I always thought that kind of trapping was very difficult and took experienced trapper and all that stuff but anyway he put them out and over two nights he caught three gray foxes as you can see and I was really impressed and I really appreciate him and this can add to our predator management plan for this year so um, he did a great job and we're going to be doing more of this and all the other stuff next year. Now stay tuned for the final tally of what we did um, up to the February 28th, the last day we could actually kill these type predators. So thank you for watching Reality Hunt Club.